Hello everyone, thanks for stopping by and checking out today's video. So the wait for Spider-Man 2 is finally over and I was lucky enough to get to play it a little bit early thanks to a copy provided by Sony. And for today's video, I figured I'd go over some in-game tips and tricks that I wish I knew about way sooner when I was just starting on my playthrough. But first, I want to tell you guys about this really cool app I've been using called Outplayed. Now Outplayed is the ultimate video game capturing app and Outplayed automatically captures all your best moments and highlights in gaming, such as getting kills and wins in online multiplayer games, or what I've been personally using it for is to capture footage for Starfield for my mod videos. And the reason I've been using Outplayed is because I just love the fact that it has a built-in editor where I can cut out clips that I don't need on the fly. I also like that it has a ton of custom hotkeys, so I can take in-game screenshots for my thumbnails with just the push of a couple buttons. So be sure to check the link in the description to download the Outplayed app for completely free, and a huge thanks to Outplayed for sponsoring today's video. So Spider-Man 2 is way bigger than the previous two games in almost every way. There's more things to do, more things to see, and it has a much larger map. And in Spider-Man 2, the fast travel system works a little bit differently now compared to the old subway system from the previous games. In Spider-Man 2, you have to go to each zone and earn a certain level of XP to unlock the ability to travel to that zone. This is done by completing side quests, repeatable criminal activity events, photo opportunities, and clearing out enemy bases. With larger events like side missions earning the most experience towards unlocking each zone. Now normally with a game like this, I'd recommend sticking to the main story and then branching out and doing some exploring later on. But with my experience playing Spider-Man 2, I stuck to the main story for a while and I ended up regretting not clearing out some of the fast travel zones just way sooner. And the reason for this is that after some of the main story missions, Miles and Peter might end up going separate ways during the mission, and after the mission ends, they might end up on completely different sides of the city, resulting in you traveling like 3,000 to 5,000 meters just to start the next mission, and this happens pretty often. Which isn't too much of a complaint because it's so much fun to just travel through the city with your new wingsuits, but after seven or eight times traveling the length of the entire city just to start the next mission, I ended up wishing that I had unlocked some of the fast travel points a lot sooner. So my advice isn't to go around clearing every zone ASAP, but to maybe skip a few zones and clear maybe a zone at the top of the city or one or two zones in the middle and then some at the bottom. That way you have at least a couple fast travel points scattered throughout the city. That way you can get at least a little bit of a head start towards the next mission. Which leads me into my second tip, which is while you're exploring, make sure to be constantly scanning with the R3 button to see things that don't normally show up on your map. Now the map does a great job of giving you a general idea of what you'll find in each of the zones, but scanning will reveal the exact location of these items and objectives. So what I would normally do is just get really high up on a building and then scan to see where I wanted to go next. So next up, I wanted to talk about some of the in-game settings. Now, I normally like to bring up these in my tips and tricks videos because you'd be shocked at how many comments I've gotten over the years from people that never think to look in the settings and then they regret that they missed the option to turn something on or off that would have made their life just way easier. Now, in Spider-Man 2, there are a ton of in-game settings to change every aspect of the game to match your play style. Individual things like changing enemies' damage or turning down puzzle difficulty or just completely turning off the puzzles in general. They even have an in-game option to slow the game speed down, which is great for anyone that might be new to gaming or for someone that might be visually impaired that might normally struggle with the fast-paced combat. But let's say the game is too easy for you. They even have options in the settings to make the game a bit more difficult by turning on fall damage. This makes web swinging and wingsuit gliding a little bit more risky and challenging as you'll have to pay more attention to how fast you're going when swinging or gliding too close to buildings or the ground. I personally turned this option on as I found it to be just a lot more fun when I was going around the city exploring. And while we're in the settings, I also want to bring up the two shortcut keys that are unassigned by default and turning this feature on was an absolute game changer for me and it's something that so many players would normally completely miss. Now what this option does is allow you to assign a shortcut to the left and the right D-pads for quick access. 
This allows things like photo mode or any of your ability combos to be activated with just the push of a button. Now, I personally like to take a lot of pictures in this game for thumbnails and stuff. So I assigned the photo mode to the left D-pad and then I assigned the slow down time button to the right D-pad. That way, if I need to slow down the game to get the perfect action shot, I can do it a lot easier. Plus, having the ability to slow down time with the push of a button is really fun and makes the game feel a lot more cinematic during combat. Now I know a lot of you would probably skip over this option completely, but trust me on this one, just assign one of the slow down options to one of your shortcut keys and then turn it on and off while you play and it adds a whole new level of fun to the game when you're swinging through the city or while you're in combat. I also found that the slow down time option is really handy when it comes to stealth combat. When you're sneaking around and you want to make sure that an enemy doesn't see you, slowing down time at the push of the button is really great at making sure that you know you don't make a mistake and the enemy doesn't see you. Which leads me into the next tip which is stealth. Now stealth has gotten some upgrades from the previous games now with the addition of the web lines and it is so good now that you can clear out entire warehouses of enemies completely stealthy without the enemy even knowing that you're there. Now in Spider-Man 2 there are a ton of annoying enemies with long range weapons so my advice is at the very least to scope out the areas before you engage and try to take out the sniper stealthily before jumping straight into the fight. Another thing that got an overhaul is the new parry system. And at first I didn't think much of it because let's be honest, most games have a parry system. And Spider-Man has so many abilities that a parry wasn't really needed too much when I could just do a perfect dodge with the Spidey Sense. Well, the parry is actually pretty good in Spider-Man 2 and there are even skills that you can upgrade to make it even better, such as skills that replenish your abilities every time you get a parry or disarming an enemy of their weapon when you parry them. And you can parry pretty much any attack, just wait until you see the red flash above your head and then hit the L1 button. And if you push it too early, it'll just count as a block, which will just negate some of the damage that you take instead. But just be sure to remember that you can't parry ranged attacks, which is why I recommended that you go and try to take out the snipers first it's definitely annoying when you have five or six melee guys up in your face and you're trying to perfectly parry them but you can't because you have all these ranged enemies which are constantly interrupting you and then the final tip that i have for you all in today's video is to not sleep on the shared ability tree now i know it's super tempting to invest the skill points early on into upgrading your individual spider men and their cool abilities but the middle shared skill tree is what i found to give me the most bang for my buck here they share abilities that help them in combat and more importantly, getting from point A to point B a lot faster. So if you plan on doing a lot of the side objectives and doing a lot of exploring, having a lot of the skills in the shared tree made general combat and exploration a lot more fun compared to when I didn't have some of these skills. For example, all the skills that are in the middle of the tree, such as the loop-de-loop, -loop, the corner tether, the spider jump, spider dash, and aerial escapades all made my life way easier once I unlocked them. So that is going to do it for all of the tips and tricks that I have for you all in today's video. If you guys enjoyed it, then please give this video a thumbs up it's greatly appreciated and if you're new here be sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications that way you guys don't miss out on any future spider-man 2 videos and that is going to do it for me guys and a big thank you again to outplayed for sponsoring today's video